Hello, my name is Mary Burke and I am the Special Collections Manager here at Harding Simmons. And the point of this video is to walk you through the basic steps of research, um, not research on your different majors or writing, but research on Harding Simmons history. Um, here in the library, just so you know, we have oodles of physical items that you could uh, thumb through or look at. We have books, we have documents, we have photographs. We have so much that has not been digitized and put online. And so just know that the resources you're going to look at with me today on the computer is just a small sampling of what is out there. So if you're hitting a roadblock after um, watching this video and you realize you need more resources, please, please, please contact me or somebody else in the library and we will be happy to help you. All right, so there are a lot of classes here on campus that are given projects to research and learn about something historically about this school, whether it is an important founder like James B. Simmons or an influential president like Jefferson Davis Sandifer, or even just understanding where your major or your sport came from. And there are a lot of really interesting ways to find that information. However, Google is not going to be your best asset in these research projects. So just know going in that you can go to Google and you can type in someone's name um, or a date and you might get a hit, but more than likely you won't. And so that is why I'm going over these resources now that are Hardin Simmons specific. So um, I'm going to share my screen with you so you can walk through these steps with me. And do, 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 do. here we go. All right, so this is just a generic Google page. Um, so again, to show you like if something doesn't show up. Um, let's see, uh, a famous person here on campus that you will get information on is someone, like I mentioned earlier, Jefferson Davis Sandifer. Okay, he's one of my people I search frequently. All right, so here we have a bunch of hits, um, and but look, there your first hits are related to Hardin Simmons University. So these are sources that are gonna bring you internally. Um, but if you're looking outward of Hardin Simmons, this is a fantastic um, resource, um, TSA Online. Um, so it's the historical handbook, it's Texas-based. Um, these uh, pieces are vetted and looked after by actual historians and researchers, so it's not just a blog post. So you're gonna get real information. But say you have absolutely no idea where to begin. Who is Jefferson Davis Sandifer? Who is Rupert Richardson? What is Shelton Stadium named for? This is the best way to start. Go to our library webpage, all right? So library.hsutx.edu, bookmark that. And you're gonna see all these tabs. Um, so in your library instructions, you'll have gone over all of these tabs. Um, what we're gonna use is HSU history. And what we've done is we have digitized some books that are all about Hart and Simmons history. And this is, the starting point for your research if it's HSU specific. Think of this as going to Wikipedia and getting that first nugget of information so you know where to jump off from. So view digitized HSU historical books, click. And these are different books, like I said, we've digitized. Um, this first one, The Romance of Hardin Simmons, these are fun little, each chapter is a story written by somebody else um, who's connected to the school of something that impacted them. Um, so you can see there's a story about Dannett, there's a story about Paramore, um, you'll hear that name around town, um, former presidents, the Cowboy Band, um, John Hardin, who was, who is one of the people we have our name, our school named for. Um, James B. Simmons, this is a biography about James B. Simmons, um, the person who gave us that last chunk of change to open our doors. So if you have a project about Simmons, start here. Um, Famous Are They Halls is a quirky book written by a man named Rupert Richardson. And uh, Richardson, his life was connected to the school. He was born in the same year that Simmons College opened in um, 1891. He came on campus as a student. He graduated from here and then later came back to teach um, in the history department. He moved up in ranks to dean of students, to VP, to eventual president of the school. And so this is his perspective of what campus was like during his 
time here. So, you know, it's his firsthand account. There are um, truths, but there are also some of his biases in it. Um, so recommend reading that if you're looking at Richardson or say you need a book or a perspective, what was going on on campus during World War II, you could read this chapter. Uh, the, Jeff the Jefferson Davis Sandifer book, it's a bio about Sandifer. So again, if you're reading about Sandifer, you can skim this. And then the centennial history, this is like a textbook. It is the first 100 years of the school and um, it's, it's a fantastic resource of information. Um, it's a little bit more of a dry read compared to Richardson's book because you don't have those fun anecdotes and stories built in, but it is an incredible resource. So this is where I like to start is with these books. And because they've been digitized, you know, I'd recommend reading the whole book, but if you're short on time, they're searchable. So I'm going to click on the centennial history, which is like I said, the first 100 years of the school, it's like a textbook. And so it's gonna load the whole book. Do, 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 do. It will load. There we go. All right. So like I said, it's all here. You can scroll it and look. These are our cover pages, there we go. And so if you're looking for specific information, you can hit control F and you get this little search bar. And I'm sure a lot of you are aware of that feature already. And then you can type in your search keys. So let's say I just type in Sandifer. Oh boy, I'm gonna get 292 hits, that's a lot. Um, what if I am just looking for information on his wife, Pauline? Um, so rather than just saying Sandifer, let me say Pauline, maybe. We'll get hits that way. No hits. Oh, wait, her name's not Pauline. Her name's Lucille. My mistake, guys, my mistake. Pauline is uh, uh, Rupert's wife, okay? So I haven't even finished typing her name and I'm already getting hits, 15 hits. So this is a way where you can start and you can get information. And what's great about this is this will give you years. So if you can start pinpointing years of your search, this will give you um, basic biographical information that you can then jump off of, all right? So those are the books. And so I recommend searching through those first to get your, your feet wet in terms of information to find. The next website or online source I wanna make you aware of is this right here, the West Texas Digital Archives. And this is a fantastic resource. Um, your URL is wtda.alc.org. And what I would suggest is when you get to this website, scroll down and click on this Hardin Simmons tab. That will limit all of your searches to Hardin Simmons specific because there are a lot of names that are similar within our institutions. Um, so for example, if you walk around ACU's campus, you're gonna have buildings that are named the same as ours because they were the same donors who gave money to have buildings named. And so if you are looking for Hardin Simmons specific, limit your searches to Hardin Simmons. And when you get here, we have over 20,000 items scanned and uploaded. They are photographs, maps, yearbooks, catalogs, so, so, so much. And to me, the biggest resource you will have in this website is looking through the yearbooks. And the yearbooks are called the Bronco. We don't have yearbooks anymore. Um, and so let me pull this up for you. Where are you? The Bronco, all right. And you can go through these year by year. These are also physical here in the library. So if you're one who prefers to go through the actual book, they're here, you can check them out as well. Um, but say you have a class and you're assigned a decade and you're like, what's the campus culture like in the 1980s? Oh, well, okay, let me just look, let me limit my search to the 1980s and flip through these books. All right, look and see what clubs are offered, um, what, what uh, buildings are being built. So that shows what emphasis is being placed on programs, um, what faculty are here. Um, during wartime, you'll notice that a lot of the male students are gone and it's a predominantly female-based campus. Um, or 
is there a sudden influx of female graduate students? You know, look, what does that mean in our history's culture? Women are going to school, they're leaving the home. So there are so many things that you can base out of these yearbooks. And they give you really good um, reference points of what campus was like in this small snapshot of a time, right? So you can scroll, oops, you can scroll, um, you can see what's going on, what silly, goofy activities were going on. Um, so students from McMurray, ACU, and HSU mobbed up against out-of-staters from the same school in a free-for-all game of competition. I mean, that looks fun, right? <laughs> wagon races. All right, so yearbooks are a great resource um, when you're looking for information. Another fantastic resource um, is through the school newspaper. And so the student-run newspaper, we have that still around today. It's digital rather than paper now, but um, you'll see there are a couple of these. So the HSU brand, the Simmons brand, the brand of Hardin Simmons University. It's all the school newspaper. It just, it happened to have name changes throughout the years. And so that's why they're labeled differently. So you can search those directly or we can just search in this toolbar and it will pull every resource that that name will, will click. So say we want to, we talked, we looked at Sandifer in the books. What if we want to look at Sandifer Memorial, the building and figure out, maybe we can find out when it was built. Um, those books will tell us the exact date that it was built, so that can help us narrow down these searches. Do we want photographs of it? So here's a photograph of it. It's an older photo because you can see um, the pond doesn't exist yet. Look at the parking spots that don't exist anymore. You can see that's, um, is that Moody? Or Barron's being constructed. But um, it, it gives you a glimpse as to what was going on in, in the school. So we can scroll and we can look at everything or you can limit your searches. So say I only want um, newspapers or standard for memorials listed. And let's see, these range from 1987, 1949, 1949, which is when the building opened. So we'll get a lot of those, the 60s. And again, we can limit these. So say we only want to look at papers from the 40s so we can learn about the fundraising of it and the actual opening. And so when we click on these, it brings us to a new tab and you can thumb through and read all of these. Oops. Make this big. And you can, a couple of things. You can download these so you have access to them if you have to make a PowerPoint and put images in there. Um, just hit this tab right here and hit download large right there. Or if you just want to read it on your computer online, you can hit this zoom button and it will allow you to zoom in and out. All right. So this piece is telling us about Rupert Richardson giving a tribute to the late Sanford. Um, Prexy was a name given to the president, at, like a, a, a term of endearment, basically. All right, so you can read these, you can quote these, these are your primary sources. And so if your professors are looking for primary sources, this is it, this is where you go. Um, let's see, what else? So this is just really a jumping off point of when you are looking for Hardin Simmons history, you know, don't go straight to Google because you're gonna end up empty handed a lot of the times. Go to these resources, go to the digitized books that you can access through the library webpage access the West Texas Digital Archives and look there. Um, another thing on the library website, we have um, timelines, that, timelines that we've put up there that um, you can click on and go through and they give you basic information. But um, your biggest resource is me, really, um, and everybody else here in the library. If you have questions, contact us. Um, if you can physically be here in the, on campus, Come on up. The research center is open Monday through Friday, eight to five. Um, it's helpful if you do email me or call me ahead of time so I can pull resources for you. Um, but if you just drop by, that's great too. I'm happy to help. Um, I'm gonna go super low tech on you and uh, give you, let's see, my uh, contact information. Here's my business card. 
do, 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 do. All right, so I think that's visible. So my email is mary.burke at hsutx.edu. And my phone number, it's not a cell, so you can't text it. It's just uh, my office phone, 325-670-1807. Um, so that's that. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to help you with whatever. Um, and if you need more detailed instructions on how to access information, let me know. Like I said, this is a very brief introduction just to get your feet wet and to help you com be comfortable looking through these resources. Because when you're doing firsthand research that no one else has done before, it's a bit intimidating because no one has done the work for you. So you are the ones doing the work. But um, best of luck and uh, happy, happy researching. Thanks.